Assalamu alaikum respected viewers. This is the 11th episode of our Explorer Silence program and our guest today is Sister Rukia. Assalamu alaikum Sister Rukia, welcome to our show. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. I'm glad to be here. Could you please introduce yourself first? I am Rukia Perhat. I am from East Turkestan and my hometown is Ulja. We have been seeing and hearing the oppressions being done to our people in East Turkestan. Now you are living among us here in Turkey. Could you briefly describe your life? Well, there are six members in my family, my parents, my three brothers, and myself. Our family is a religious family, and my brother, my brothers and my father um, are Hafiz, which means they have memorized the Quran, and my mother um, is a housewife. Since I can remember, my father was always a Hafiz, and um, he practiced Islam. When I was about 12 years old, I was told that my father was tortured and killed in a Chinese prison and his body was returned to us. Because I was so young at that time, I did not realize what was happening or why. My brothers and I kept studying religion as we grew older. In 2008, by the end of the year, my brothers were arrested. What reason were they arrested for? Well, they were studying religion and they were also teaching it to other students. They also used to pray and read Quran on a daily basis. Um, and that was the reason they were arrested for. Uh, we had no freedom of um, religion. Even before they were arrested, the Chinese authorities made life very hard for us. They used to come and go to always threaten us. They arrested my brothers, um, as I said, by the end of the year. And finally, I was arrested in 2009. Uh, the crime they were accused of was that they were teaching religion illegally and practicing religion illegally. Um, the authorities wouldn't let us see my brothers um, after the arrest. We went to the prison multiple times to beg them to at least see them. Um, but however, that was not um, possible. I, when I was arrested in 2009, I was arrested with other 16 students. Um, we were tortured many times and among us there were young boys and girls. Were you studying with them together? Yes, I was studying with them. Um, Ch Chinese authorities arrested us at night time and locked us in a cold room. There was nothing in that room, just cold concrete floor and they started interrogating us after two days. I was very young at that time, I was only 16. One thing that I remember from my father, he was always telling us that the Chinese authorities are very cruel and we should not um, tell them anything or give them any information because once they get what they want, they will still turn around and do what they intended to do. Um, therefore, we should not surrender ourselves to them. With these in mind, I did not answer them. Even if they were asking my name, I would express my unwillingness to surrender. There were so many questions like whom did you hang out with whom did you see whom did you get acquainted with who came to visit your brothers and, um, for those who were willing to cooperate though they had a softer policy however for those who refused to tell them anything or give them any information we were categorized as defiant and we were required to memorize a questionnaire which had 56 questions in it the first question was does god exist um we all believed in god and i never said that god did not exist um the torture got more and more severe as we did not surrender uh, they had a torturing room equipped with um electric shock Torturing equipment, people, especially let's say an ordinary, we were um, cannot imagine that they would have these type of torturing methods because you know, like they wouldn't have seen it or heard of it, and even if they hear it, it might just sound like a story because they don't see it, right? If you don't see it, you don't believe it. They, they used to have an underground torture rooms with uh, electric shock equipment and also rooms filled with water. And these rooms were there to torture people. 
um, who were steadfast in their religion and um, who wouldn't surrender and they were willing to sacrifice themselves for the freedom of East Turkestan. They tortured us with the electric shock, as I mentioned, and uh, they would assault girls and women sexually, harass them. They would say things like, you're not human, we will wipe you, wipe you out of all Xinjiang, uh, which is a province, and that, that province is a part of China, and it is our country. It, is, it doesn't matter whether you admit it or not, uh, or you, you surrender yourself, you will be wiped out from this world. These are the things that they used to say to us openly. Um, you know, they could have killed us easily. I, I believe the reason why they just kept on torturing us was that even if they could get one name out of out of me, they could arrest them, and then through him, they could get more and more and, and kill more Uyghurs. My father used to say that Uyghurs opened their eyes too late. You know, the Chinese government had planned this 20, 30 years ago. Uh, my brothers and my father used to say that Chinese authorities, they had too many evil plans um, and tricks. Uh, I didn't understand it fully, you know, I was young and I realized that when I, you know, when I was put through this, uh, they brought me to the torture room, tortured me with electric shock. I mean, you can see on my arms, these are the scars left from those tortures and uh, they're all over my shoulders and over my body. Were you tortured in an electrical chair? Yes. I was forced to sit on the electrical chair, like we see in the movies. Um, and they would attach electrical wires to my arms and shoulders. The question they would ask were, whom did you get acquainted with? Whom did you study with? Um, who came to visit you? The bottom line is that they want you to tell them everybody you know and help them arrest more people. The crimes such as studying religion illegally or practicing religious were the only excuse you know, they would use to arrest people. Two years after my arrest, um, I was told that two of my brothers and other three siblings were sentenced to death in a closed hearing. I do not believe they even had a hearing. Before executing my brothers, they took me, they took me there. My hands were handcuffed from behind, and my feet were chained. And th also, there was a long, thick chain around my neck. They took me there before executing all five brothers. Um, I think it was somewhere around the Urumqi airport. Um, I believe the reason they took me there um, was to not see each other however to show um, to show me what the Chinese authorities could do to me if we did not comply with them uh, in front of my eyes they were shot and killed after they took me back they kept interrogating me and threatening me uh, they mentioned the death of my brothers and what they could do if I did not cooperate with them um, I was also given a paper stating that my older brother was sentenced to life in prison. Do the executed brothers include your three brothers and other two brothers? No, those were two of my brothers and three other siblings, one from Kashgar and one from Aksu. Did you see them being shot and killed? Yes, I saw them with my own eyes. And their crime was practicing religion illegally, wasn't it? Their crime was trying to separate the country, practicing religion illegally, possessing weapons illegally. I don't remember how long after that, but my mother passed away. They took me to her home after she passed away, and I still had some handcuffs and chains. So did you go to your mother's funeral with handcuffs and chains? Yes, that's right. I had handcuffs in my hands, chains in my feet and neck when I went to the funeral. Later, I heard that my mother had been arrested many times and she had died in prison. So was your mother also tortured to death in prison? Yes, I was told later that my mother was tortured and killed in prison. Um, I spent around three years in prison. By the way, the prison um, I was in was 
by the end of the third year they took me to Aksu, another city in East Turkestan. The reason they took me to Aksu was that a couple of women told them that they know me because they studied with me before. So they brought those two women and used them as witnesses against me. Um, those two women said that they knew me, but I denied it and I said that I didn't know them. My stubbornness frustrated Chinese authorities even more and tortured me in the Waterfield torture room in Aksu. Did you know these two women? Yes, I knew them. But when I was asked, I told them I didn't know them. And the two women kept insisting that, that they knew me. Um, so the Chinese authorities saw me as an extreme defiant. Uh, they were beating with sticks, assaulting. Um, I still have the scars from the beating I suffered. Um, as you can see on my cheeks and all over my head. Um, but they are healed now and they're less visible. Um, as I said earlier, they were very frustrated with me and, uh, and they will say that I haven't learned my lesson yet. So you were about 19 years old at that time? Yes, I was. Um, these water-filled rooms were um, something that nobody had ever heard of. Um, they're specially built for torturing. These rooms are long underground ground rooms filled with deep water and they're long. And uh, at least six an inch um, it's above the water and there are hooks and ceilings for hanging people by handcuffs. You will be hanged by the handcuffs and the rest of your body uh, below your neck will be under the water. Um, so they are kind enough to, to give you at least a piece of bread in the morning or in the evening. And when they give you bread, they put it on the wood and on the stick and then they give it to you so you can eat it and then they release it, your, our hands. When I was thrown into the water prison, uh, there were other three boys who were also thrown at the same time, and among them, one boy died on the spot. Did he die because of the torture? Yes, he died because of the torture. He had been beaten and tortured severely even before it happened. Um, so he died when he was thrown into the water prison. They took out his body by pulling from his leg. The rooms are specially built, they're long rooms, um, we were being tortured and body body base had to go into the water, everything was in the water. I would be left in the water for six hours when I was thrown into the water prison for the first time. After that I was thrown three to um, four hours almost every day for six months. Uh, after six months they took me back to the Urumji prison. Um, I forgot to mention one more thing. When I was in the Urumji prison, before even going to Aksu, they picked me and two other girls and two boys among the 16 children that were we were all, that were arrested together, and they left us in front of the dogs to feed them. One of the boys is only about a year older than me, probably 18 years old. The rest of them are younger than me. Again, the reason they did this because was because we didn't cooperate with them. Um, we were almost naked when we were left for the dogs. Uh, both boys and girls were only left with underwear. Um, it was amazing what the dogs did. Um, I really wanted to let our people know these things. I thought about it many times, but at the end, I'm a woman and I didn't want to talk about these sufferings and humiliations. That's the only reason I was silent and did not give any public testimony until now. Um, the dogs bit my thigh and a couple other places um, on my back. Uh, the dogs also bit the other prisoners a few times. Um, but with the help of God, the dogs did not do more. Um, what we thought at that time was even if you are a vicious dog, you cannot do anything more than what God allows you to do. You can only eat as if God is willing and it allows you to do so. I told this to myself over and over and also repeated that to my brothers and sisters around me and told them to be brave, not to be afraid of the animals. Um, but one of the younger 
sisters she died on the spot out of fear um since i was the eldest among them i kept encouraging them to be brave i reassured them that we only face what god had written for us if he allows these animals to eat us then we will be eaten by the animals if the not the dogs cannot do anything after biting each of us a few times the dog stopped biting us the, um, they stop by themselves and they sit on the side with their tongue hanging out there were three dogs and the tories they started beating the dogs with big sticks and try to force them to bite and eat us but the dogs did not attack us at all uh, so the chinese were frustrated by this um so they took their frustration at, out on us and they turned to beat us they beat us until they were tired and they threw us back to the prison cell so one female prisoner died in there is that correct yes one of our sisters died in front of our eyes um they also removed her body by pulling her leg by her leg the chinese authorities do not have any mercy whatsoever for anyone um let them be young old men or women they will all get tortured assaulted and humiliated i mean overall they do not see us as a human being we are treated worse than animals even the animals were not treated as bad as we were um, they openly say to us you are not human we will wipe you out we will conquer the whole world and we will own the world and we can you we can only eat if we give you food um if we do not give you food nobody can there were times that they left us starving for multiple days without any food and tell us that see see if your god will give you any food um it was not only me who suffered these tortures and humiliations it was all our brothers and sisters um they suffered the same torture and humiliations and among the 16 children that are arrested together with you you mentioned that one sister was scared to death when you were thrown to the dogs and the other died in water prison other than um is there anyone who survived other than them and who were able to leave i do not know if anyone got out they took me to aksu and returned back to rumche because i was tired um of being too too long in the water my health got worse um i lost my memory after coming back to the prison in rumchi and i could not feel anything couldn't remember or recognize anyone uh, no one outside knew my situation in there because my father mother and brothers passed away and nobody else knew anything about me i was left there with lost memory i don't know anything that happened during that time um somehow somebody close to me in the prison managed to pass a message to my aunt um who was my mother's older sister i do not know how they did it after finding out about my situation my aunt collected 70000 chinese yuan from relatives and others um she didn't have much money herself and the authorities deemed me to die soon so they sold me to my aunt for 70000 yuan and with the help of god i sought a lot of medical treatment and recovered then i got married and went to some other places and applied for um passport were you able to come to turkey with your husband no my husband got out first he went to dubai uh my passport application took some time and with the help of god i got my passport a year later i was notified around um 12 o'clock at night that my passport was ready to be picked up so i went there the next morning picked up my passport and arrived in dubai that same evening all your family members were killed by the Chinese authorities is that correct? Yes, that's right. I'm the only survivor in our family now. Um after I arrived here, I heard that my older brother in prison was also killed by the Chinese authorities because he allegedly tried to escape from the Rim Jiulan by prison. Are those news confirmed? Yes, they are. Thank you for your courage to come here and share with us your story. 
May God reward you. Do you have anything else that you want to share with the viewers? There is a verse in the Quran in which God says, It is only the shaitan that causes you to fear from its friends, but do not fear them and fear me if you are believers. One thing I want the viewers to know is that if these tyrants and oppressors could control anything, we would have been eaten by dogs when we were thrown at them. They would have eaten us up. Oh. But with the help of God, those animals did not eat us. Other than biting us a few times, they did not do any more harm and refused to bite us even when they were beaten. One thing I really want to emphasize on is that we should only fear God. Um, we should show it in our actions um, so that we don't suffer from these difficulties and these tortures. In other words, we fear Chinese authorities too much. Yes, that's right. What I'm trying to stress on is that we only fear God. Um, our belief should be complete and God will help us during these difficult times. I want our people to truly um, believe in God and God will help us. We have experienced how God helps believers in such difficult situations. One more thing I wanted to mention is that I used to curse Chinese authorities as traitors and dogs and one of them told me he wants to show me who is the real traitor. So one day they took us to a room and showed us in the other room some people who came to report to Chinese authorities who's teaching religion to others and who's practicing religion. I heard them with my own ears. Is he trying to say you do not do it but your very own people do it willingly? Yes, that's right. He said, see it for yourself. Who's the traitor and who's the dog? The Chinese authorities is opp are oppressing us and using our people against each other because we do not have unity among ourselves and we do not trust each other. People focus on the differences between ourselves and make them a big deal and it causes us to separate even more. It has been seven to eight months. I have not opened any messages on my phone or watched any news. It's because people argue about tribal things and curse each other. Now I have six cousins in East Turkestan. I was only able to contact them twice after I came to Turkey. It's been two years I haven't contacted them. In February 2018, I learned from a close friend that my oldest cousin's 20-year-old son was killed by the Chinese authorities and his body was returned to them. And I do not have any news about my other cousins. Finally, I would like to emphasize on the question that we should all ask ourselves. Do I truly fear God or should I fear the Chinese authorities? We should contemplate on it and go back to believing in God. Thank you, sister. May God reward you. This is the end of our program today. We will see you next time.